Good morning, everybody. My name is Carol Brown, and I'm here to talk to you about how to do better planning and using automation and a couple of tips and tricks on how to help you with that. So what I was originally going to do with this video is I was going to show you guys how to use Notion to automate your tasks and the things that you have to do to reduce the decision making fatigue that usually goes into planning or getting stuff done. And when I did the Notion tour, as it's called, I realized that in order for this board to really make the, the full impact or make sense to you, I would have to provide you all the context knowledge as to why it was set up that way, talk about decision-making metrics and, and all that fun, joyous stuff. So we're going to take a step back and we're basically going to talk about all that foundational stuff before I throw you into the tour. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is what Notion is. So I've talked about Notion before. I even did a tour a little while back and I ended up switching from Notion to bullet journaling. Now I've gone back from bullet journaling to Notion. And I'll explain that little history lesson here as well. And Notion is, is a productivity tool that's very versatile. And what I mean by versatile, I mean, you can really do anything with it. You can do stuff from habit tracking to data collection. You can onboard and offboard clients. You can do like, for, you can use it for businesses. You can just use it to make your own website. It's, the possibilities are really endless and I I really struggle sometimes with the best way to quantify what exactly it is other than everything, right? But what I will say is I usually refer to it or when I have to explain it to other people that it's it's a digital bullet journal. That's that's pretty much it. And what I mean by digital bullet journal, I mean that it's just you can basically do whatever it is that you need to do with it. You can track everything that you need to track with it. And you can hold on to data. You can get rid of it. You can do whatever you want to do. You can make it pretty. You can make it plain. You can, it's, yeah, it's digital bullet journal as far as I'm concerned. Now, I am aware that the whole concept of bullet journal when it was made by Ryder White was for it to basically take a break from the screen and that having so much screen time was actually really bad for you. I am aware of that. And the big reason why I ended up actually having to switch is part of why I wanted to make this video, which is about automating your tasks. Where every time I would make a bullet journal, it would become immediately outdated because the stuff that was going on and is going on in my life right now is very fast paced. It's always changing. Like one month is not the same as the last month. And you know, what happened last year is I would make a spread for the month and then like two weeks into it, it would be outdated or I couldn't use it anymore because something had occurred. Right now, I know that you can make these spreads in ways to account for that. Right. And what ended up kind of happening for me was the second fold of what makes bullet journaling kind of appealing to folks and what kind of took away from me was just the time in order to get it set up. Now, I did spend some time getting my Notion board set up, but now that I've got it set up, it's honestly done. It's working. It's fluid. I, I, I jump in there. I get stuff done. I see what has to get done. I've got reminders that pop up. It's, it's great. I absolutely love it. It just, I use it to help me remember to do things or that things have been done. I've got reminders set up. It just basically, it, it takes a lot of, I want to say passive thinking out of it because as I like to say very frequently, uh, the human brain is really good at coming up with ideas, but really shit at remembering them, right? So this is where I put everything in there to be remembered. You could also refer to that as a second brain as well. And that's kind of technically what this is, but I don't have it quite set up in the uh, forte sense. Now, on top of using Notion, I also use Google Calendar, right? Like those are my two go-to apps. Um, despite everything, I've always gone back to Google Calendar, much to the detriment of my anti-Google friends. I apologize. Uh, but what I do with it is I, it's where I use to track where I do my more high intensive tasks. And what I mean by that, and I'll kind of show it over here to one of these sides as soon as editing Carol comes in, um, is I actually have my day broken up into three parts. I have it broken up into when I have high energy, high motivation, uh, low energy, moderate motivation, and then low, low, right? And so what that means is all the really difficult things that take a lot of my energy and my focus, I try to slot it in that high energy, you know, high, high everything spot because that's just gonna have to be when it's done. And I also, thanks to this method, have also come to realize that when I get to like the low energy, low motivation, low anything, that tends to be where I say okay to a lot of things instead of like really thinking about it and saying no. For example, um, at the end of the day when I'm really tired and I don't want to cook, right, I'm going to say yes to takeout, right? So um, one of the things that I have been trying to do is because I know that that's when my low, low period is going to be, I try to account for that ahead of time. So for example, we're doing meal planning this week, so that way I'm not tempted to order Chinese. 
Now, another reason I would encourage you to use a calendar of some sort in some shape or form is because there's this wonderful thing, it's called Parkinson's Law. And the way that Parkinson's Law, law works is that if you give a task all day to do, it will take all day to do. So when you use a calendar and you know that something's gonna be high energy, high urgency or whatever, then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna give it that slot somewhere in that four hour block where you put your work that needs to get done in that time frame. So for example, right now in this bright 7 a.m. morning, I'm recording this video because if I try to do it later, I won't. Now, what that also means is it's a commitment from you to yourself in the sense that I'm going to do this thing at this time and I'm gonna spend this long doing it. Now, uh, the one caveat that I will tell you and the thing that I have encountered with individuals is that when I say, how long do you think that this is going to take you? They don't know. So for example, when I started to record this video, I thought I could knock it out in a half hour. And what literally happened is while I was doing the Notion tour, I had a sticky note right here and I was just writing all the other videos that I was going to have to record. So I knew that I was not gonna be able to finish it. And what I did was I basically chunked it and now I'm batching it. And YouTube videos are a really good example of that. So for example, you have the idea, right? So with the idea of the video that you want to make, you have to do really fun things like do the initial draft of the script and see what that's gonna look like. You have to do some research. So for example, I couldn't quite remember the name of Parkinson's Law, so I had to go look it up and make sure that I was citing it correctly because there's nothing like sounding like an idiot on the internet to, for everybody to remember, right? So you script it, you research it, you kind of give it a quick read through. You make, you do, and one thing that I would really encourage you all to do, and it drives me nuts when I see YouTube videos that do this, it's where you talk about a thing, but you don't actually talk about the thing. So when you're scripting it, are you talking about the thing? Are you on task? Have you gone off a rabbit trail? Like, yeah. Once you get done with that part, you have to do the recordings, and then you get to do fun things like decide if you want B-roll or not. Probably not for me, I'm not a B-roll kind of gal. And then once you get done with the B-roll, then you have to decide if you wanna have background music to cover up the weird sounds that happen outside your house. That's me, I do that. And then the fun editing that goes with it. I would encourage the music comes after the editing though, just you know, pro tip from me to you. Once you get done with that, you get to upload it and then you get to go do that fun SEO stuff of making sure that you've got the right keywords in there and the description's done correctly and, and then you get to publish it. And then if you want to do the appropriate follow through for the video, then you have to respond to all the comments within 24 hours. Now that is literally me breaking down everything that goes into for me to make a YouTube video. For other people who really do make a living off of this, there's a lot more that goes into it. I'm giving you an example of a task that you have to break down because you're not gonna be able to get it done in like 20 minutes or a half hour. Now go ahead and you decide on when you are most productive, when you have low motivation and all that stuff. And again, make those four hour chunks on your calendar. So I am a morning person, so the surprise of everyone. I wake up early, I get all the hard stuff out of the way, and then uh, I try to schedule all my meetings um, when I have them in that block that comes afterwards because that's my moderate energy, and that's not something that I need to get done with great urgency at that time. So I try to schedule all my meetings there, and then uh, anything that I do in the low maintenance, that's my reactive stuff. So it's like something came up, so now I'm gonna go ahead and respond to a kind of situation. Um, with that said, that may not be your pattern. You may not be a morning person. You may be a night owl or uh, a busy day bee or something. I don't know what they call the people with high energy during the middle of the day, but they have a name. I would just, again, find those four hour blocks um, and decide when you have the ability to go and get like the hard stuff out of the way. Now, one thing that I have that's added onto my Notion board is the Eisenhower decision matrix. Now, decision matrix isn't a new thing. It's not like this newfangled productivity item that's coming out, but it's something that I actually made a point to integrate into my decision making process because when you have a lot of things to do and you'll see that on my board I have a lot of stuff that's going on um, sometimes just having that visual to help me figure out what I need to kind of prioritize throughout the course of the day is really helpful for me so here is I'm moving to the right side here is the decision matrix at a glance right um, and basically the way it works is you decide if something is urgent not urgent if it is important or not important right and obviously if it's important, it falls under urgent, go ahead and do it right now. If it is important, but not urgent, then schedule the time to go ahead and do it. If it's not important, but urgent, then delegate the time when you should be doing it or maybe hand that off to somebody else, right? If it's not urgent or not important, then you're gonna go ahead and delete it. Now, I don't delete my tasks. What I usually do is I just put them off until another day. That's what happens. Uh, one other element that I add on to my decision making is actually the energy that it takes to go and do something. And I talk about it a little bit in the video. I'll talk about it again now. But if you have a task that needs a certain level of energy from you to do, um, go ahead and indicate if it's gonna be high, medium, or low. And the reason I say that is because if you have an urgent task, 
right? But it takes low energy to do, then you know that you can do it quickly, right? And if you have an urgent task that is important and also uh, high energy, then you know that it's going to be a big thing that you're going to have to figure out. And I would encourage to see if you could batch that. That's literally what ended, again, ended up happening with this video. So again, the decision making matrix, right? So if it's urgent, not urgent, important, not important, or in my case on my board, I say impact. Does it have a high impact of what it is that I'm trying to do? After that, your energy level, does it take low, moderate, or high energy in order to do it? So I want to remind you guys again that the reason I'm going over all this foundation stuff and why I have my board set up the way that it is, is again to help me automate these things that have to get done. It's to take the thinking out of it so that way I can just focus a lot more on doing. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll take a jump into the board. I'll show you the little tour of the place. And uh, one thing I will tell you is that this is based off of some templates and the templates, I'll put links in the bottom for you guys. So that way, if you want to try and mimic it or emulate it in some shape or form, you can go ahead and do that. And the reason I want to offer that too is because I know working with Notion for the first time is a really overwhelming experience. There's a lot that goes into it. And there's a like there's YouTube channels dedicated to just explaining how to do the coding and the little tiny things about Notion. Uh, so hopefully this will be a good springboard for you if this is something that you feel like doing. I did pay for those templates. So if you're looking for a free product, those templates will not be free. But again, you can kind of see how I'm emulating them, how I'm using them, and then decide if that's an investment that you want to go ahead and make. So with that done, let's just go ahead and switch screen. Okay, so here is my Notion board at a glance. It looks a little busy and it's it's one of those. So here, the thing when you guys are making your own Notion boards, it's going to always make sense to you, may not make sense to everybody else. This is what makes sense to me. So we'll do a quick tour and I'll kind of explain how I use all that decision making um, filtering systems that I kind of talked to you about and what that looks like on here. So uh, the first thing that you guys are going to see is going to be my drop zone right over here. This is where I will put any tasks that I am looking to get done. So, for example, uh, I actually need to call my aunt. So we'll just put that on there. Okay, so I went ahead and I did that task and that task is going to uh, populate on the bottom. We'll get there in a second. Now, one thing that I do want to point out is that I kind of have my Notion board set up in the level 10 life system. So these are 10 areas of my life that I am looking to uh, focus on and make sure that gets some kind of attention. Now, if you guys are taking a look over here, you're going to see that there's only nine binders. Um, there's not 10. And that's actually on purpose because one of the things that I'm looking at doing within my life is uh, giving back. So something that has to do with charity or uh, maybe recycling more like little tiny things like that and it honestly doesn't warrant its own book so it doesn't get one but <clears throat> so what you guys saw uh, just a second ago was I put the task here I put when the due date was what part of the life it impacted uh, the actual impact is a high impact low impact amount of energy and then project typed what happens with project typed is it basically disappears to the bottom and then it gets archived into another uh, folder that I don't really look at except when I need to clear it out so um, after that is my daily view. We're going to come right back to this. And then over here is my monthly, uh, reflection. We'll call it that. It's basically where I put everything that I need to look back on within the course of the month. If I need to find it, this is part of my archive system. So that way I don't get bogged down by data. Uh, so let's go ahead and move to do this. Okay. So what you guys are seeing are all the tasks that I have pretty much need to do for in some shape or form, right? And I've got all the high priority things right here on the top. So these are things that absolutely have to get done. No question about it. Got to get done under that medium priority and then what those items are. Now, if you're looking at this one, for example, Skillshare and wondering why it's got an icon in front of it, it's because um, I put the link to this particular Skillshare in this task. So that way it was just easier for me to find. So that will happen if that's something that you like doing. And then over here on the side, you're going to see an overview of the calendar of how much stuff needs to get done and when it needs to get done. Um, now, if you guys didn't know, I like to front load my weeks and get everything done on Monday. So as I get closer to Friday, I can kind of take it a little bit easier and be more reactive and not quite as proactive. It's just how my brain works. Uh, this one task right here, uh, review Ken's manuscript, that's a client that I have. And what that is, is basically I've given myself like this much time to actually finish his manuscript. So that's why you guys see it kind of stretched out that way. Uh, now, I know at a glance that looks really busy and it uh, can be a little overwhelming, which is why I actually made this daily uh, setup right here. And the way this works is I just hit new day. It's going to populate. It's going to make a new page. And these are all the things that I need to focus on within the course of the day. So I can just have this particular one up. Uh, one thing that I do like to do that is uh, kind of a fun carol quirk 
is I actually like to type what my top three things that I need to get done for the day are. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I had to look at that for a hot minute. So these are the top three things that I definitely want to focus on that need to get done at some point of the day. Um, now, right here is a widget. This is pretty much my overall view of the day. So it kind of gives me an idea of where my time is. So if something shows up, I can just look over here and see when I've got time for it. Uh, and then over here are just like little fun things. So uh, I like to do work intervals of 20 minutes. So every time I do an interval, I will just go ahead and put an X in there to show how many intervals that I did during the course of the day. Uh, daily things for work I have to do, mental wellness, health. Uh, this part right here, this Rolodex, this is actually uh, a database in which it tells me if I need to be in touch with somebody at some point because uh, I don't know if you guys are aware, I'm really bad at keeping in touch with my family. So I've kind of made a reminder system to like reach out to certain family members and see how they're doing. Uh, workout. I did actually work out this morning, so I can go ahead and check that out. And I have already had my one glass of water this morning. And that is pretty much it on here. Um, and then over here on this side, kind of like you saw, these are the list of things that has to get done. So the to-do list, things got to get done. These have to get done today. Uh, these are things that need to get done during the course of the week. At some point, I put Manny Petty on, but there's no way I'm getting a Manny Petty done today. In fact, I'm probably not going to get that done until Saturday. Maybe Sunday. Mm, let's aim for Saturday. Um, lunch workout, that's going to get done today. Uh, I did, in fact, make my bed, so that will show up tomorrow. And fill start dishwasher. Oh, and this thing on the bottom, this is just my mood tracker. This is just how I know how I'm feeling throughout the course of the day and how I check in. Um, yesterday, I actually felt pretty content, so I'm going to go and change that color because I didn't do it yesterday. And then, uh, let's see, I haven't done my morning journaling, so I'm going to do that in a minute. But yeah, so that's how this is pretty much set up. This is set up in a way that when I open it, it's just everything that I need to get done in the day. It's a one-stop shop, and then all I have to do is just kind of scroll down and scroll back up, and that's that. One final thing that I want to show you guys, because uh, as you saw, you know, these are all dated, and that's set up on purpose. And I, obviously, I don't leave these all here. So what happens is on the f Monday at the start of the week, I will highlight these and then I will just go ahead and throw them into May. And if I need to go find them at any point, I can just click on May and they're all going to be right down here. So if there's a particular thing on a certain day that I want to go and check on, I can definitely go back and find that there. So fun, fun little things that you can do with Notion.